Imagine that, another drum set. But I've actually been pretty good about not buying any other drum sets because I have like a million other projects that I need to get to and this is one of them. And the faster I get through those projects, that means I can buy more projects. Let me just show you how bad it actually is. Got a full Rogers kit that needs a rewrap. There's a snare buried in all those hoops. This Ludwig club date, that snare, those two snares, this kit, this snare, that snare, that snare, this kit, and of course, this one. One day, there will be no drums inside of this room. But this kit is a Kent Vibratone, and if you Google Kent Vibratone, not too much really shows up. Uh, I know that Kents were made in the USA, and so often I hear that Kents were like the poor man's gretches, but I have this kit, and then I used to have an orphan bass drum that I sold to Tim Buell, actually, and just from seeing these drums and that one other drum and, you know, a few other random Kents here and there, these are nowhere near the quality of Gretsch, so I really don't know why people say that. But you already know the deal, these are super dusty, super crusty, and just a little bit rusty. So these do need a little bit of work, and I want to say that these are the original calfskin heads on it. I want to try and save them, and I definitely need to clean them. It almost looks like there's mold on there, which it might not be. I really don't know much about calfskin heads, so I'm going to try and save them. But worst case scenario, I have a surprise inside of this box. So we'll dive into that box later, but this kit is a 20-inch bass drum, 12-inch rat tom, and 14-inch snare. I made a rule for myself that I would never buy an incomplete kit again, but as you can see, there's one right in front of me. Uh, but I want to say that this kit actually probably came as this configuration because back in the day, floor toms were like an add-on basically. But I did find a 14 inch made in Japan floor tom that probably looks nothing like this kit, but it's orange and it'll have to do for now. But with that being said, if you do have a matching floor tom, then let me know. All right, I don't quite remember exactly what this drum is. I know it's a 14 inch, I know it's made in Japan, and I know it's an orange sparkle. We got some legs. At least we know this is mine. All right, I'm no made in Japan expert and there's no badge on this, so I'm not sure exactly what this is from. Uh, but let's see how close it matches. So the wrap is definitely a bit lighter, but probably the biggest difference is the hardware. This has chrome hardware while the Kent has nickel hardware. So down the road, I could switch out all this hardware so that it matches, but for now, let's leave it. I go any further I really don't think I can save these heads I mean I'm sure that could be revived but I really don't know what I'm doing but now I kind of want to know if a modern head will fit on this drum which it seems like it will just a little bit tight and next will the hoop fit on it yep that seems to be okay so that is good to know let's carry on with some more unboxings you all know I'm into a lot of different things, which is why I'm excited for this video sponsor, Bespoke Post, which is a monthly membership club where they figure out what you're into and what you like doing. And with that information, they send you a monthly box full of all sorts of cool stuff. So let's see what they sent me this month. Box number one. All right, look at that beefy bottle opener. It's like a paperweight, basically. A knife that is definitely sharp. What is this? pen a fountain pen with refills finally in this box we got the lloyd notebook so this box alone will come in super handy i can write out plans and cut lists for projects in the notebook with this fancy pen i can sharpen pencils with this as i'm you know working on the project and then once i'm done with the project i can crack open a cold one all right let's check out this next box now we got a plethora of hot sauces oh my gosh <laughs> i don't know there's something about hot sauce that makes everything taste better so i'm really excited to try all of these out bryce and i might need to order some tacos and uh put these to the test i approve i approve too and last box let's see what's in this big old thing 
Oh man, look at this. So what, this is a Scandinavian style hatchet. But I've actually been looking for a nicer style hatchet to keep in the house for cutting up, you know, little pieces of kindling to help start fire. So I think this will definitely do the job. Each box is worth about $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of that, and 90% of these products come from small businesses, and many of which are based here in the US. And signing up is super simple. You start out by taking a short quiz and telling them what you're interested in and not interested in. And with that information, every month they put together these boxes, and before they ship, you get to preview them so you can keep it, swap it out for a different box on offer, or skip the month totally for no charge at all. And good news for you, we're giving you 20% off your first box if you go to bespokepost.com slash rdavidr20 or just click the link in the description and enter promo code rdavidr20. This might need to be my new unboxing hatchet. Like I said, these shells are crazy dusty, so I'm just going to hit them with some soapy water to get all the loose stuff off. And same thing with the rims, just squirt on some water and wipe off the dust. Now into the shop, the bass drum hoops are getting the rattle cane treatment. These look like originally they were gloss black, but I'm pretty sure some fresh glossy hoops on some old crusty shells wouldn't look the best, so I'm going with a satin finish instead. But for the crusty shells, I'm going to try and revive the wrap the best I can using this Novus plastic polish and a little handheld buffer. So this is really simple and pretty self-explanatory, but you just start out with the coarse polish and go around the whole shell. And I made sure to avoid the badge because these are like paper thin stamp brass. And the last thing I wanna do is ruin them. And then after that, you just go on to the fine polish, same steps as before, going around the whole drum evenly, avoiding the badge. Then just go in with a rag and buff it all out to get rid of the haze. Then last, there's the spray. It's not like a clear coat, but it's like a protective film of sorts, and this step will really bring back the shine. So that's the process, and it's the same for every other drum, and you can totally do this by hand without a buffer, but it takes a lot of elbow grease, and I'm fresh out. The bass drum is definitely the worst, and I don't know what causes those weird black speckles, but another thing you can do to really bring back a wrap is to wet sand it, which again takes a lot of effort, but this wrap is like paper thin, and once you start going through the outer layer and into the glitter, it's just a mess to bring back and really isn't worth it. At that point, you're better off just rewrapping it, but I wanna keep this kit as original as possible. So here's before polishing, and here's after. And you might be wondering, I didn't do the floor tom because I was hoping that these shells would lighten up just enough to match it better, which they definitely do, and they're still not 100%, which is basically impossible to get them to match 100%, but they're close enough for me. And last step for the shells, I'm gonna sand the bearing edges because there's just a little bit of glue squeeze out, and they're really not the smoothest. I probably should recut the bearing edges, but I wanna see how they sound first. Okay, so the majority of this hardware is pretty rusty. I mean, there's some parts that really aren't that bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and soak all of these parts in some vinegar. I was about to throw in the throw off, but then I realized that the arm is actually bent. I kind of assumed it was supposed to be like that, but you can see because it's bent up, it's uh, hitting down here. So let's try and straighten that out. While I'm waiting on that, one of the bass drum tension rods is bent up, so I used the vise to straighten that out too. The tension rods from the Tom weren't that bad, so I didn't soak them. Instead, I'm gonna use a drill, some soapy water, and aluminum foil to clean them. And it's the exact same process for the bass drum tension rods. The only difference is I use a modified guitar tuner to hold them in the drill, which I talk more about in another video if you wanna learn more about it. And then to protect the rods from rusting more, I'm just using some paste wax to add a thin protective coat to them. Same thing with the rims, just some soapy water, aluminum foil, and paste wax. Snare side hoop is definitely the worst. I don't mind a little bit of corrosion on the actual hoop, but here where it actually seats on the head is a little bit chunky still, so let's bring this to the garage. 
I have a wire wheel on the drill press to get all the flaky stuff off, which kind of worked, but not really. I ultimately ended up using some files to really smooth it out. Then to finish it off, I used some super fine sandpaper. I think it was like 600 grit. And then of course you got to protect it with some paste wax. All right, so the vinegar bath has been sitting for over a day now. You can see all these little bubbles up here and it's a lot more cloudy and nasty looking, which means that it did something. And because I added the throw off, this is like filled to the brim now. So I have to empty this the hard way. That should be low enough to carry now. Once you drain the crust liquid, you're gonna wanna rinse everything off really good. And just to be safe, I'll add some baking soda to neutralize any of the vinegar that's left over. And once that's sat for a bit, just rinse everything off one more time. This next part is probably the least fun and takes the longest. So in most cases, you can't just wipe off the rust, but in some of the bad spots, you might need to scrub it with the foil. Most of this stuff is simple to clean, but the more complex looking parts like the rim clips really do suck and take a lot of time. And once everything is clean and dried off, again, you need to protect these parts. So for some of them, I'm wiping on some paste wax, but for the washers and screws, the rim clips and the throw off, I put them in these little cups and sprayed them with this quick shine stuff just because I had it. But you can use any type of oil like three in one oil or any other lightweight oil. Just let the part soak for a couple minutes and then wipe off the excess. And from this point, you really could go crazy and buff everything and make it super shiny. But if you know me, you know that I like things that show their age, so I'm totally happy with how they are now. So that means we can now assemble these drums. And this kit is probably the easiest and fastest to put back together because these are single tension drums. So there's only one lug with one screw. But because these are single tension drums, it makes it a little bit awkward to put the heads back on because you have to put on the bottom head and bottom hoop and then the top head and top hoop and then the top and bottom rim clips and then the tension rod on all while fighting gravity. But once you get two tension rods in, it's not bad since everything stays together. Another thing about single tension drums is you're kind of limited on the tuning since you can only adjust both heads at the same time. Each head is tuned together. So this is my first time ever tuning a kit like this. So if anyone has any pointers, then drop a comment. Last unboxing in this video, I promise. Look at that. So this is a goatskin resonant bass drum head with the fur still on it, and this is made by Bovid Percussion. So because the kit had calfskin heads on it, I figured I'll get something special, and I've been following Bovid for a while, and figured I would check them out finally. Oh. 